Hi everyone, I'm Kat and welcome to my channel, Naturally Beautiful Girl. So today we are going to be doing another video talking about lipsticks. I know I've been talking a lot about lipsticks recently, but I truly do love lipsticks and Fall especially really makes me think about lipsticks and wearing fun lip colors, but the video I'm going to be bringing you today is about some new lipstick formulas that have launched. So Ilya launched their Color Block lipsticks, Alima Pure launched their Velvet lipsticks, and Well People launched their Optimus Semi Matte lipsticks. And so I have one of each of those lip formulas, so what I want to do in this video is give you a review of them, compare them, give you my thoughts on them, that way, if you're interested in checking any of these out, you can figure out what might be better for you, what you might prefer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right in. So the one I have on my lips currently is the Ilya Color Block Lipstick. I'm gonna show you a clip of me applying it, but what I have on is the shade Rosette. And Rosette is this nice pink, it's a little bit of a warm tone pink, but I really like it. And I talked about this in my favorite fall lipstick um, video, which I will link up above. But I really like this um, color and I really like this formula. I had tried the previous Ilya lipstick formulas. I had tried their lip tints, their uh, previous version of their lipstick, and their lip crayons. And I like their lip crayons the best out of all their lip products because they were the most pigmented and most long wearing. But this lipstick is moved into that category of being super pigmented and super long wearing. Previously, I thought their lipsticks were a little more sheer, which depending on what you like, um, it could be nice. And I really enjoyed the colors of the, their lipsticks, but I'd wish that they were a bit more pigmented and a bit more long wearing. And this new formula brings both of those. It is so pigmented, um, you really don't have to worry about building up the color. You can just swipe on and you've got color. And it is really quite long wearing. Um, I was really surprised the first time I wore this because it is quite creamy and I just thought like, oh, it'll just slide off. Like I'm going to lose the color. But as I looked in the mirror throughout the day, I kept seeing the color on my lips. Like it was still there. And so I was super impressed by that. I kept trying it and every time it kept wearing well, it kept wearing a long time throughout the day. And it's really comfortable. Like it's a formula um, that I forget that I have it on. It just sits on my lips, it feels nice, it's not too dry, it's not too creamy, it's just an extremely comfortable formula. It's a lipstick that you can put on and you just, you don't worry about it. You don't worry about it fading, you don't feel it on your lips, you don't feel your lips getting dry. It is just a very low maintenance lip formula. And I have to say, I really come to love it. Like, Ilya definitely stepped up their lipstick game. If you weren't a huge fan of their previous lipsticks, this formula is completely different from their previous formula. It reminds me more of something like the Red Apple Lipstick lip formulas and the fact that they're very comfortable, very long wearing. Overall, I really like it. The lipstick itself costs $28, which I feel like is a mid-range price. It's not really high, it's not over the $30 mark, but it's not under $20. I would call this a mid-range lipstick in terms of price. And the packaging is nice, um, it's not anything like outstanding, it's pretty sleek, it says Ilya on it. Um, the closure is not magnetic, but it does snap. And then you can just twist up the lipstick to get the color. And then on the bottom of the bullet, it shows like a little stamp with the color and also gives the color name. It was a little tricky for me to pick out the color of this lipstick. Um, there are a number of pink shades that look very similar and I'm still not really sure what the difference is between them. But this is Rosette and I really like it. So if you have been curious about this new lipstick, I 100% give it my stamp of approval. The bullet looks a little beat up because it has been going around with me in my purse, in my backpack. Like this has been a lipstick that I've been grabbing for and really enjoying. So definitely a great new launch from Ilya. And now I have on the Alima Pure Velvet Lipstick and I'm going to show you a clip of me applying it. The shade I have on is Odessa and I was super excited to hear that Alima Pure was launching lipsticks because I am a huge Alima Pure fan. Their satin matte foundation is like my ride or die foundation. I really like their cream concealer as well. So I was like, yes. When I heard they were coming out with a lipstick, I'm like, this is going to be amazing. And I have to say, I am a little bit disappointed with this lipstick and I'm going to get into why. First off, you may be seeing this in the clip. It may come across, it may not. 
it is not nearly as pigmented as the Ilia lipstick. So I definitely have to work to build up the color more. You don't get this level of pigmentation with just one pass. And the other thing that I think contributes to that is it is not a super creamy lipstick. This is called a velvet lipstick and it definitely has the most matte formula out of the three I'm talking about. It's more reminiscent of the 100% pure cocoa butter semi matte lipstick and the um, Erre Perez also their matte lipstick, not the olive oil one, the matte one. So it's more reminiscent to those two in terms of formula. If I had to rank the three, I rank 100% pure the cocoa butter at the bottom, this one from Lima Pure in the middle, and I still rank the Erre Perez formula above it because I think the Erre Perez formula is a little bit more pigmented and easier to apply. It does feel a bit dry on the lips when you wear it for a while because it is that more matte formula and so it's not as comfortable as the Ilia one. The Ilia one, like I said, you just kind of forget you have it on. After you've had this one on for a while, you're like, yeah, my lips feel a bit dry. Um, I also had to go ahead and exfoliate my lips this morning prior to filming this video because the Alima Pure definitely clings to any dry patches you have on your lips. So if there's any dry skin, this formula really tends to stick to that. That's one of the things I've noticed about matte lipsticks in general is that they're not forgiving. If you have any dry patch on your lip, these lipsticks will definitely accentuate them. Also, I was not anticipating this color to be as vibrant of a pink as it is. When I had seen swatches online, and I did not think it was this intense. I mean, I like pink lipsticks, but remember how I was saying in my favorite fall lipsticks formulas that I had like summer and spring pinks. This is definitely for me a summer and spring pink. Keep that in mind that Odessa is like this vibrant of a pink. Overall, it's okay, it's pretty long wearing, it's just not my favorite. If you are a huge lover of these more matte lip lipstick formulas, you might really like this, but if you're looking for something more creamy, more kind of comfortable in terms of formula, I prefer the Ilia. Um, I do have to say I really like the packaging of this. Yes, it is similar to the Ilia in terms that it's not a fancy bullet, but it has a really nice weight to it. In terms of like the heaviness of the packaging, out of all three of these lipsticks, this one itself has the most weight to it. So it really feels substantial when you're using it. Also, I think the black like shiny packaging with just the Alima Pure on it is very sleek, very modern, very eye-catching. And also, once you take the cap off, it also does say Alima Pure on the bullet itself. Unlike the Ilia, it doesn't have a colored label on the bottom, but it does say the name of the color on the bottom of the lipstick. And I like that it is a more long wearing lipstick, but the Ilia is just as long wearing as this one and more comfortable, which is why I tend to um, gravitate towards the Ilia lipstick more than this one. A small factor of that may also be the color because I did not do as great of a job in picking out this color. Well, I was trying, I was trying to go for like a neutral pink, but I obviously got a rather hot pink. This lipstick is $26, so it's actually $2 cheaper than the Ilia lipstick. Unlike the Ilia lipstick as well, which has a huge range of colors, this only comes in four colors. There's what's entitled a warm soft red, a light peachy nude. This is called a cheerful rosy pink. I would say more of a vibrant rosy pink but and then there's olivia which is a vibrant buildable red well so if you're looking for a lot of options there aren't i should mention as well that all three of these lipsticks do transfer because they are a bullet lipstick they're not a lipstick that dries all the way down the final lipstick i'm going to talk about is the well people optimist semi matte lipstick once again i'm going to show you a clip of me applying this lipstick the shade i am wearing is om ya in terms of the pigmentation of this lipstick, it's definitely more on par with the Ilia. It has more pigmentation, you've got more color payoff than the Ilima Pure Velvet Lipstick. As you can see, I'm not really having to build it up. And I've got a pretty intense color of this lipstick, so you know, when I do a swipe, you can definitely see the color payoff with it. The formula is a little odd to me because <laughs> it says that it is a semi-matte lipstick. In terms of formula, I thought it would be closer to the Alima Pure or to the Erre Perez uh, matte lipstick or the 100% pure cocoa butter lipstick. But I actually feel like it is more of a creamy lipstick. Like I think the name is a bit of a misnomer with this for a number of different reasons. First of all, it's creamier when it applies. I don't think it dries down as matte either. It's not a super creamy 
formula. Like it definitely is a little bit drier on the lips. It's less comfortable than a creamy lipstick. So it's more on the side of a matte lipstick in terms of comfort level, but I don't think in appearance that it looks matte at all. Also, it fades on me quite quickly. Um, and I know I have a more intense color, but I have other lipsticks that are similar to this color that do not fade that quickly on me. It's kind of weird. I think it kind of straddles being in between a matte lipstick and a creamy lipstick. I really don't like it because I feel like it doesn't do either well. Like it's not matte in terms of being like long wearing, staying in place, but it's not creamy in terms of being super comfortable either. So it's just kind of in a weird space in between. I wanna mention in particular that this shade um, Om oh, yeah. Here, I'm gonna swatch it for you here. I realized it's quite similar to another lipstick that I own, and this is Kosas Royal. And they're not exact. Um, this is Kosas Royal here, and this is the Well People lipstick in Om oh, yeah. And, but they're quite similar. <laughs> like the shit, the difference in the color between them is slight. I would say Kosas Royal is a smidge more vibrant in color and that Omya is a smidge deeper, but there's not much difference. And I know that the Kosas lipstick is more expensive, but it's a creamy lipstick that is more long wearing than the Well People lipstick. And the Well People is supposed to be a, a more matte lipstick. These are both very similar in color, so it's not an issue of just color fading. It is an issue of formulation. The Well People lipstick is $17, so it is under the $20 price points. I would clump it in the affordable lipstick category. Um, I did a video about my favorite lipsticks under $20 recently, so this would fall in that price range, but in terms of formula, all those other lipsticks that I mentioned in that video, I prefer over this one in terms of formula. The packaging of this is interesting. So if you notice here, it's got this kind of gunmetal bullet and you push the button on top and the lipstick ejects out the bottom and then you remove the actual lipstick down here. And it's this whole thing has this kind of gunmetal gray packaging. So I have a couple thoughts about this packaging. First off, um, I like the gunmetal. I think it's um, unique. I think it really fits in well with the other Well People packaging. It's the same mechanism that the Fit Glow lipsticks have and the Axiology lipsticks, two definitely more high-end lip formulas. I guess my thing with that is I feel like it has been done before and I understand Well People trying to kind of reach that more luxurious packaging by having that mechanism, but the thing for me is that this whole packaging feels more inexpensive to me because it is quite lightweight. Like it does not have the weight that the Ilia lipstick has, nor does it have the same weight that the Olima Pure lipstick has. And yeah, it looks nice, but if you were to actually pick it up, it doesn't have much weight to it. When I first realized it had this kind of packaging, like the kind of e ejection packaging, I was excited because I was like, oh, you know, it's gonna be a more affordable, um, brand kind of going for that higher end packaging, but there is definitely a difference in this level of packaging, even though it's got the same mechanism when you compare it to the more higher end lipsticks. Overall though, not my favorite. I really have to put that out there. Um, I think there are better lipsticks in this price range. I don't like the wearability of this lipstick and I don't like um, how it feels on my lips. I don't think it's worth it even though it's only um, $17. Out of these three lipsticks, if I have to recommend only one to try, it would be 100% the Ilia Color Block lipstick. That one has been my favorite out of the three. The order in which I prefer them would then be the Ilima Pure Velvet lipstick. And at the bottom of the list would be the Well People Optimus lipstick. That's just my thoughts. If you've tried any of these, let me know what you think down in the comment section down below. I just wanted to give you kind of my thoughts, what I look for in a lipstick and how these performed uh, with regards to my standards for lipsticks. I know that everyone's looking for different things and different lipsticks. They like different formulas. <laughs> they might not be as concerned about wearability and how long wearing they are um, as I am. So I just wanted to lay all that out there. Let me know what you think about all this and if you're excited to try any of these out. And once again, thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also check out my Instagram. I'll have my handle down below. I'm at Naturally Beautiful Girl. And be sure to hit the bell button on YouTube so you see all my videos I post. Um, I know that if you are subscribed but don't hit the bell button, you might not actually see all my videos. So I wanna make sure you get to see all my content that I create. 
And once again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.